Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your holy name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing power, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning in our right minds, Lord God, and in good health. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We claim the victory this day in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Yes, yes. We're going to believe God today. Yes. We're going to trust God today. Yes. We're going to stand on God's word today. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your holy name, Father God. Your name. Your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I have a scripture today. Isaiah 55. And I'm going to start in on verse 6. Seek ye the Lord he may, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and our God for he will abound in pardons for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord for as heaven is higher than the earth so is my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts, then your thoughts. Now, for years, I've read that scripture. And I've heard different interpretations of that scripture. And I prayed about it. And I focused on it. And I got a revelation. And I want to give you that revelation today, if that's all right. <laughs> what God is telling us in these scriptures is that you need to forsake your wicked thoughts and your wicked ways and return to him. And then when he tells you that his ways are higher than your ways, what God is telling you is, is that when you want something from God and you ask God for something, or if you try to have something on your own, I'll give you an example. You're looking for a house. You're looking for a house. You say, I want to buy a house. And I want, we're, we're looking and we're going to look in the $150,000 range. Hallelujah. Okay? What God is telling you is that if you're walking with him, that he's going to give you more than what you're looking for. Because his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Hallelujah. That he's going to give you a $350,000 house. A quarter of a million dollar house. When your thoughts were what? 150. Thank you, Jesus. If you can get the revelation of that, and you can think that God can give you above all, that you can even ask for things. Let's believe God today. 
Let's think like God thought. Thank you, Jesus. Let's trust God today. Let's believe God today. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Don't stay in your own thoughts. Stay in the Word. Trust God. Listen to the pastor. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the praise team, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to strengthen them today, Lord God. Give them a song to sing. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And praise God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I didn't say the praise team. I didn't say the pastor and the musician. But let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Because yeah. God is worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all the honor. Our God is extraordinary. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's worthy. God is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. I didn't say I was worthy. I said God is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He's, he deserves all my praises. God inhabits our praises today, people. We need to praise God and give him the glory. Give him the honor. When you can't trust anybody else, you can trust God. You can trust his word. You don't lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. In these next few days, you need to acknowledge God. God, what shall I do, Lord God? And we rest in God to know that he's the author and the finisher of our faith. But you got to remember what the man said. You can think on your thoughts, but God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and his ways are higher than your, than your ways. So we need to give God praise. Let, every, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Every praise belongs to God. Every word of worship belongs to yeah. God. God is worthy to be praised. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, let me hear the worshipers. Oh, I can't. Let yeah. me see the worshipers out here. Can you stand at your feet? If you can't, God understands. Oh, yes. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Come on. Come on. You can do better than that. Yeah. Oh, I feel the spirit in this place. Oh, every praise now. Hey, hey I got a little song for you here. Listen to this song. <laughs> every praise. Every praise. To our every God. word of worship. Every word of worship with one oh, of Oh, every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Is to our God. To our God. Now, can't you sing hallelujah? Sing hallelujah to oh, our glory, God. Oh, glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah is to our oh, God. Oh, every praise. Every praise. All of your praises. Every praise. Is to our God. To our God. Now, I think you got it. I think you got it. Let's do it again. Every praise. Every praise. Is to oh, our God. Oh, every word of worship. Every word of worship. With one Oh, Lord. every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Is to our God. To our God. Now, let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. To our God. Oh, glory, glory hallelujah. hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. To our God. Let us just stand and let's take it up. Let's take it up. Let's take it up. Every, every praise. praise is to oh, our God. Oh, every word of worship. Every word of worship. Oh, we want our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. To our God. Now sing hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Sing hallelujah. To oh, our glory, God. hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Is to our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Is to our God. Is to our God. Now, let's take it up one more time. Let's take it up one more time. Every praise. Every praise. Is to our God. Of worship. Every word. With one of God. Every praise. Every praise. 
every praise, every praise is to our is God. To our God. Now, can't you just sing hallelujah? Sing hallelujah to our oh, God. Oh, glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. To our God. One more time, one more time. Every praise, every praise. Every prayer, every prayer, every prayer, every prayer to our God. To our God. Well, now can't you sing Hallelujah? Sing hallelujah to oh, our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every prayer, every prayer, all my praises every prayer to, my is to our God. Now this what I, this what I like. This God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, he's my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, help me now, God, my Savior, God, my Savior, God, my healer, oh, he's my healer, God, my Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my healer. He's my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I know he is. God, my Savior. Oh, God, my Savior. God, my Deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise, 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 we pray to our God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every praise. Oh, every praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every praise. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every praise, every word of worship. Oh, hallelujah. God is worthy. God is worthy. Woo. God is worthy. Every God is worthy to be Every. praised. That's why, because God is worthy, yes, we worship Him. We yes. praise Him. We were created to worship Every Him. Every We were created to praise Him, to give Him glory, to worship our Almighty oh, God. Hallelujah. That's what we are going to do, God. We deserve you, God. You deserve, you inhabit our praises, oh God. We worship you, almighty God. For you are my righteousness. God, you are my righteousness, Lord. There is none like the almighty God. It doesn't matter where you look. You will search high and you will search low. But you won't find nobody like our Lord. He's almighty, he's strong and mighty. He's a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. That's why we worship you, God. We praise you. We adore you, God. We magnify you. We honor you. We bless your name, Jesus. God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. You're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of all praise, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
you, Jesus. You are Prince of Peace. You are Alpha and Omega, oh God. We worship and adore you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. If you know God is worthy, hallelujah, just stand to your feet and worship God. And give him praise and give him glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Shut 
Nobody great, nobody greater than you. I need somebody in the audience to help me sing. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Search all over, search all over, can't find nobody. Say I search all over. Couldn't find nobody. You are my righteousness. Just a fly at all I need. I searched all over. You're my own sufficiency. You're all sufficiency. You're all God. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you, Jesus. you are. There's nobody like you, Jesus. I can look high and I can look low. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody that can save you. Nobody that can wash you. You're my righteousness. Holy God, you are my God. I search. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say I search. Yeah. Search all over. Search all over. Can't find no In the midnight hour, Lord, you're my righteousness, God. You're my deliverer. He's your healer. He's your provider. He's the almighty God. He's the righteous king. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. Somebody know him as your provider. When you search high, when you look low, when you were searching for a God, you that job when nobody else could do it God gave you that job when your finances were low and you didn't have any money all out to put food on your table God was 
Put your bread alight. He gave you food on your table. He put clothes on your back. Hallelujah. He put shoes on your feet. There's nobody like my Jehovah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. See, I'm excited about what I see God doing, not only in my life. I'm not going to be selfish like that, but I see how God is moving in the individual's lives, in the sanctuary. When you put God first, when you commit your ways to the Lord, hallelujah, the Bible tells me no good thing will he withhold for them who walk upright. See, it's in our walking. It's not what you talk. But it's your walk, your obedience to the word of God. So you got to obey the word of God. You can't just talk it. Hallelujah. See, the devil will talk the word, but he can't walk the word. See, we got to be as gods. We got to walk the word. We got to obey the word. Obey the word. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What am I sacrificing? All the good things that God has for you. When you stand before God and he roll that film back. And you supposed to have been here, and you supposed to have been there, and you weren't there, and you look at all those lists of blessings that you missed because of your disobedience. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. So, Lord, I want everything that you have for me. God, help me to obey your word, to walk in your word, and do the things that you have told me to do. Because, Lord, your ways are higher than my ways, and your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. So, Lord, I'm going to delight myself in you, Lord God. Knowing that you will give me the desires of my heart, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For the Bible said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed found begging bread. You ought not be on a street corner holding up a sign saying you're homeless because God said, I've never seen the righteous. God's love is unconditional, but his blessings are conditional. There's some conditions to receive the blessings of God. One of them is obedience. Obedience to the word of God. Our God is a consuming fire. He's a holy God. And God tells us to be ye holy for I am holy. You are in a good position today. God has brought you here today for a reason. Don't miss your blessings. Don't miss what God is telling you today. Through the word, through the songs, through praise and worship. Don't miss God today. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We praise your holy name. For you alone are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord God, for being a shield and a defense for us, Lord. We thank you for your peace, Lord God. We thank you that you are Jehovah Shalom. God, we thank you for the peace of God ruling and reigning, God. We thank you, God, that you're in the midst, oh God. Father, we thank you for ordering our steps, Lord God. Even as we approach, oh God, this election year, Lord God, we know, God, that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Lord, you guide our footsteps, oh God. Lead us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as we come to the house of God the first day of week to offer up a sacrifice and praise, Lord. God, send your word, oh God, that we may be able to feast on your word throughout the week, Lord God, that we will look to you, God, the author and the finisher of our faith, oh God. Father, that we will run and not be weary, walk and not faint, Lord God. That we will put our trust and dependency on you, Lord God, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word, God. It says, as it is about to come forth from the man of God, speak through him, O God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God. But God, you are a mutable God. You change God. And you are also a sovereign God. You do whatsoever we, we, you will. And Father God, give us a faith, O God, to trust you, God. Not the circumstances, but to trust you, to trust your word. God, we praise you. God, we thank you. We give you all glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all the saints in the house say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. There is nobody, nobody greater, nobody, nobody greater, nobody, nobody greater than you. One more time, tell the Lord one more time. Nobody this one. Nobody greater. Nobody great, nobody great than you. How many of you serve a great God?
How many know we serve an awesome God? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome in all his ways. So we had an excellent celebration on last week. A lot of churches will not do what we do. We do things unconventional around here. That's why you call it family life. We, we've been doing this for years now, and so we had a fall festival on last week on the grounds. The fellowship was awesome. Thank God for our those who spearheaded this and all of those who worked uh, together with them, Sister Michelle Fields and Sister D. Hall and all those that worked with them. <clears throat> On the scene, behind the scene. And see, a lot of people they were looking at what's actually happening. Looking at we're having a good time Everybody's coming together. We get a chance to play games. Kids play games. We eat, so on and so forth. But let me tell you how God looks at it. And I try to look at it the way God looks at it. God is looking at a people who are coming together in love and harmony and fellowship, yes. understanding that what we're doing is the tool. It's, it's the tool that God is using to bring us together. Otherwise, we probably would just, we, we, we would maybe call each other, maybe see each other, speak to each other. But we would not come together and talk and fellowship and enjoy one another's company and presence. Yes. That's what real church family does. Amen. Amen. And, and not only are we enjoying each other's company, we are also learning from one another. I try my best. It's my intentions. I try to be intentional about what I do. If someone come to that festival who I hadn't seen in a while, you better understand that I'm probably going to spend as much time with them as I possibly can because I don't know when I'm going to see them again. And so I enjoy the fellowship and I try to pour into them. I wish I was like 10 to 15 people on that day. I wish I could clone myself. I mean, however many people is there, I wish I could be that many to, to have one-on-one, -on -one, to fellowship, to just talk, to just enjoy. How many understand that this is praise and worship? This is the house of prayer. This is the house of fellowship. But when we do things like we did on Sunday, it's where we really get to know each other in the foxhole. Oh, yeah. Amen. And so <clears throat> it's nothing that in my mind that can substitute being with the saints of the living God who is called the church, the called out ones. Amen. Now, I don't know what you get when you come together. Lord have mercy. Last time I heard about Deacon Gaston, I just looked at Deacon Gaston. Deacon Gaston was in the hospital last time I talked to his wife. He sit, he's sitting on the bench right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the, that's the kind of God we serve, man. That's the kind of God we serve. And, and, and so it's those type of things where we're able to get one-on-one -on -one and talk about the goodness of God and talk about how you do certain things. And, and I love the way you all are going into mentoring one another and you're spending time and you're helping each other. I love that because that's what God wants us to do. That's exactly what he wants to do. So I, I just, I just I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I commend you for doing what you do. And it's not about the numbers. I was talking to Brother Brian Hall. And it's not about the numbers. It's about the fellowship. It's about the quality. Yeah. It's about just having a good time. It's about being poured into and you poured into someone else. And, and, and it's like, you know, it's like it's a certain feeling you get for the rest of the week. Yeah. Amen. I see why the psalmist in Psalms, uh, 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 one, is it 113, Behold How Good. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together. And when he said brother, he's talking about mankind. He, he ain't leaving out the sisters. Right. I believe if somebody could pay our bills and give us food to eat 
and we could go where we wanted to go. We'd come here and fellowship and stay as long as we want to. We'd go and eat, take a yeah. bath, go to sleep, come back and fellowship. Yeah. Ain't got to worry about no bills. Ain't got to worry about money. Ain't got to worry about resources. Nobody bother you. Uh, incidentally, that's the way it's going to be in heaven. I don't know about you, but that's why I'm on my way to heaven because that's how it's going to be. Every day, what they say, every day going to be howdy, howdy. Sabbath will have no end. It's just going to be good. Hallelujah. So I'll just, you know, we look forward to those times. We're going to have something probably again in uh, December where we're fellowshipping together. We have something coming up in November 23rd. That's the weekend before Thanksgiving. And um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Family Life Bible Fellowship Church, that's what we do. Amen. Hallelujah. So I have two things, and I'm not going to keep you long. I, I do want you to, from, the, from here until the end, uh, make sure you keep the time on me. Because we don't want to be too long. We want to make sure that you're out of here at a decent time. I, I want to talk to you very briefly about something that's coming up on Tuesday. And uh, it's, it is, I, I, I need you to be, I, I want to be clear. I use this terminology all the time. I want to be clear to you that it is our obligation as citizens of the kingdom and citizens of the United States to vote. Amen. We do not have an option Amen. not to vote. If you are old enough to vote, yeah. you should have registered by now to vote. People have died so that we can have an opportunity to vote. And so I want to take you to a scripture over in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, because a lot of people want to know, how do I vote? How do I vote? Who do I vote for? First of all, it's our, we're obligated to do what the word of God tells us to do. And so we must understand the word of God and we must understand God in light of his word. And so those of us who are servants of the Most High, those of us who are servants in high places, we are servants in the government, whether it's in kingdom, religion, government, politics, whatever, we are supposed to be serving according to the Word of God because the government and the laws and regulations and rules came out of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And the government should be upon his shoulders. And so we have to pray for the king. We have to honor those that are in, in public office and so on and so forth so that they can do. We have to pray for them so that they can do what's in the will of the people and do what's right. Are you going to have a perfect candidate? Absolutely not. But you have to look at the candidate that is the closest to the word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so... We have to love what God loves and hate what God hates. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, this is not the message. This is just to let you understand that we need to vote. The Bible says in the Amplified, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, these six things the Lord hates, indeed seven are an abomination to him. So if you're going to vote or when you vote, not if you're going to vote, but when you vote, Bear these things in mind. The Lord hates a proud look, the spirit that makes one overestimate himself or herself and underestimate, underestimate others. He hates a lying tongue. He hates hands that shed innocent blood. He hates a heart that manufactures wicked thoughts and plans. He hates feet that are swift and running to evil. He hates a false witness who breathes out lies even under oath. And he who sows discord among his brethren. God loves a humble heart. He loves an honest tongue. He loves hands that help the innocent. He loves a heart that plans good things. He loves feet that run to do good. He loves a true witness. And he also loves one 
who sows peace and unity among the brethren, in our case, the sisters as well. And so we must understand if we want to know how to vote, then we vote according to these scriptures. And the church said, amen. amen. Today I'm excited. I'm excited today because today we are celebrating. It's, like, it's, it, it's not like it is. Today is Founders Day. 23 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, let me tell you something. If, 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 you, if, you were, if you were not with us from the start, you, you understand why Deacon Mitchell is standing on his feet and, and, and I'm about to jump and run around the room because 23 years ago, we got started at Goodwin Hall, room 12, room 112. And our church sign was a Coca-Cola sign. Family Life Bible Fellowship Church meeting here. And I was so excited. See, the brothers, they get on, they get on to me for, for, about working and stuff, but they don't understand. I had a keyboard about that long and a case in one hand and an amp, square amp in the left hand. And boy, we pulled it all the way to the room. We had a long way to walk. The Lord finally blessed the pastor. At that time, that was me, to park closer to the building. But most people had to walk. You had to walk from here down to the stop sign. Now, that would have been enough to, to call some folks and say, I just can't, I can't. Pastor, I love you, but I can't. We're not walking that far in the rain. We're not walking that far in the cold. We're just not doing it. We did it for 18 months. And here we are. And so this is not just, this is not just Founders Day. We're going to be talking about this for the rest of the month. And here again, we have experienced a variety of transformations. Been through some stuff. But it was transforming. And the reason why, you know, the, the fact that we were faithful and we stayed the course, many of you are here now. Sister Betty, can you just stand up? I, I need y'all to put the camera on Sister Betty. I know she might not like this. Sister Betty, she, she is one of the ones, because Sister Betty and, and her family, and we had other families, we met together, and we planned. And we talked about land. We talked about buildings. We talked about, I got so much advice from this young lady. I know she shout. And she talked to you one-on-one, -on -one, but this is a lady of wisdom. This is a lady of power. This is a lady of authority. She has good seed. I met her mom. And she poured into this ministry and wisdom and knowledge early on. And she told me this. She said, look, we're looking for a place for the building. And she said, let's not waste money on renting. We're looking at a building uh, $2,000 a month. She said, we could take that money and put it on a mortgage. And I'm so glad I listened. Make a long story short, here we are. Amen. And everything you see, look around. And if you go out the door and you look across the street and you look at the parking lot and you look everywhere you see and everything that can be moved or carried out, whether it's hanging or movable or attachable, whatever, everything you see, God has allowed us. Yes. I ain't said me, because my name ain't on the church. My name on my house, 2607, but not the church. So we own and have paid for everything. God has blessed us. And so we have experienced a variety of transformations, and thus far we still remain faithful strong, mm -hmm. prosperous in spirit, soul, and body. Let's give God some praise up in here. Yeah. And let me tell you something. It's a good thing when you don't have to do something strange for some change. It's a good thing when you don't have to sell fish, 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 fish dinners and 
and, 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 and chicken and have fashion shows. And it's a good thing when you don't have to tell folk today we're going to have a $100 line and a $200 line. And I need you to give and I need you to dig deep. It, it, it's a blessing that we don't have to go that route. Don't have to tell you we're going to buy something so we can get your money and, and then six months later we done forgot about what we told you and spent the money otherwise. We don't have to deal with any of that. Ain't nobody in here begging. Nobody in here in lack. That's what God will do when you walk in faithfulness, when you do his will. So with all that in mind, I need to talk to you very briefly. And we're going to be talking probably uh, the next week on the same thing. I want to talk to you about divine guidance, divine guidance. It has everything to do with what the brotherhood pray about every Thursday. And that's the vision of family life, Bible, fellowship, church. Without divine guidance, we would not be here. We're here for such a time as this. And it doesn't matter who's not here, who used to be here, who, who, who whatever, whatever. It had nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with where you are, where we are right now. I'm so excited. I just can't. It, 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 hallelujah. My, my life, if anybody would have told me my life would be like this at this age, I would have said, I'm, I'm living in a dream world. It's impossible. There's no way. Because the world getting worse and worse. And folk are falling from the faith. And people are doing all kind of things. And folk won't support it. And they won't do this. And they say one thing and do another. And they, it, just, it just ain't going to work. But I stand by to tell you, if you be faithful, God will be faithful to you. If you love him and obey him, he will give you the fruit of the land. If you do what God call you to do. God will always see about you. God will always strengthen you. You will have power. You will have authority. You will have everything you need. He'll bless your socks off. All you got to do is keep on believing. Keep on standing. Keep on trusting. Keep on obeying. And some people, they can't relate to this, but I'm here to tell you, just keep on serving God. Keep on serving God. Serve him in spite of. Walk with him in spite of. Do what he called you to do in spite of. Help somebody else. See, we are his arms, his legs. We are his ambassadors. Keep on talking to somebody. Keep on helping somebody else. Keep on pouring. Keep on giving. Keep on serving from your cup that has overflowed. Keep on allowing God to use you. Every chance you get, every chance you get, it ought to be about somebody else's life. It ought to be about helping somebody. If you do that, if you bless somebody else's family, he'll bless yours. When you have trouble and problems, he'll help you to overcome. When you help somebody else, overcome in their life. God is able to do everything now unto him. Not tomorrow, but right now. Now he's able to do everything you need him to do. And he's going to do it over and over and over again. And how often do you need him to do it? Every day. So he's got you every day. I got you. God says, I got you. Well, I need this. I got you. Well, this right here ain't never seen before. And it's going to cost. I got you. I don't know how I'm going to find a way out. God says, I got you. <laughs> Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to. See, see some of y'all don't understand. Some of y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand that. There's a lot of things that have gone on and transpired in my life, and I have walked and gone from faith to faith, and I've been in, I've been in, in a few ministries where I served and served and served and served and served, and I have, I have, God has shown me some things I've understood, but sometimes you have to be selfish. Sometimes you have to say, I don't care what everybody else do. <laughs> you have to say, they stop, they quit, they change, they no longer. But then you have to say, what does that have to do with me? Because the last time I checked, they can't help me. They can't heal me. They can't deliver me. They're never there in the midnight hour. 
I can't remember the last time they paid my bills. So, therefore, I'm not going to be deterrent or bothered or influenced by what somebody else do. And so I've learned to be selfish and I've learned how to do what God told me to do in spite of. Amen. And we've been in a situation, yeah, we've been in a situation where on Sunday nights, it's just a few of us at, at, at Sunday night service, church packed during the day. The first lady and I, while we were young and serving the Lord, and didn't have much. All we had was ourselves and Jesus. We were faithful and obedient. And so we were there. There are many Wednesday nights we spent, not many folks around us. And there were many times that we would be at church and folk be in and out, in and out, up and down, in and out. And yes, I used to fuss. I used to say, you know what? It seems like we got to do everything all the time, all the time. We got to be here all the time. Other folk can do what they want to do. And we just always got to be here. And as soon as we miss, they talking to us like, 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 like we don't know. They talking to us like we so unfaithful and ungrateful. And you got other folks and other folks our age. They just come when they get ready and do what they want to do and stay as long as they want to. And they leave. And then they come here with a lot of foolishness and fuss and, and all this kind of stuff. And it seems like they pay attention to them and they try to help, uh, help them. And, and we hear all the time, and they just look over us, always want us to do stuff. They ask us to do stuff, but, but, but they just look all over us. As soon as we do something wrong, they want to criticize us. What in the world is going on? They just hypocrites. They just got favoritism. They just said, and, said, and God said, shut up. But God. <laughs> and he begins to ask the question, who's blessing you? He asked the question. Who's going to keep you? He asked the question, when you needed what you needed, who gave it to you? How many jobs have you had? How many promotions have you had? How often has your pay increased? How many times have you been sick in the hospital? How many accidents has he saved you and kept you from. See, sometimes you got to tell his flesh, you better be quiet, boy, before you mess up. Be quiet. Tell your flesh to be quiet and keep your mouth closed. God had a plan for our lives. A plan of good and not evil. Had an expected end. And let me tell you something. Don't get it twisted now. This is not the end. It's not the end. Numerically, I know I'm in my fourth quarter, but I'm not in my fourth quarter. I'm about halfway. Thank you, Lord. And so what happened was is that we, as we fast forward, God has given us divine guidance, and he has given us vision. And what has kept us here and alive is vision. So let's talk about the vision for about the next few minutes. This is a vision that has kept us alive, together, and successful. And the vision here that God has given us was or is to minister to the needs of the whole family, entire family. Everybody in the family, no matter what your status, single, married, divorced, engaged, widow, widower, doesn't matter, deserted. God gave us this vision to minister to everybody. And how was it to be done? It was to be done by teaching. And that's why we teach. We're teaching ministry. Not only do we teach, but we train. We say, look, this is what God says, and we say, come here, this is how you do it, in various ways. And so we have the different ministries here to help facilitate that. 
So don't get caught up in, I'm a dancer, I'm a praise team leader, and I sing on the praise team, or I sing the choir, or I'm high. Or I'm over. No, 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 no. Those are the tools to bring us together so that we can be ministered to. And so we do it by teaching and training, and we teach them and train them. And there's a certain experience, there's a certain, there's a certain thing, there's a certain result we want them to get out of the teaching and the training. And that's to experience total victory in Christ through the word of God. So it's all about Christ. It's about the family and it's about Christ. This is how it works. There's no way that you could have a blessed family and a functional family and a family with good relationships without Christ. And the problem with the world today is that we have broken down dysfunctional families. It all goes back to the family. You see an individual that's, that's grown, they're an adult, and they're having a lot of problems and issues in their life. It goes back to the family. And a lot of people, they're no longer here because they could not grasp the vision. They could not see themselves having a better whole Improved, transforming family. Yeah. They say, how oh, he talk about his family. Well, baby, that's our vision. This is our gift to the universal church, to the kingdom. Most ministries, they don't talk about family. And if they do, it's once a year where they have family and friends day. And they refuse to open their eyes to see where is the enemy attacking. He's yeah. attacking yeah. families. Yeah. Any problem, any issue, if it's somebody in prison, if they're a serial killer, they mean and hateful, they act like animals, you could trace it all back to their roots, their family. And if we were to look at own, our own lives, our greatest hurt and pain came from the lack thereof in the family. And if you don't allow God or find a way for God to minister to you through those hurts and pains and through those issues and through those situations, if you don't allow him to make you whole, you're going to be a repeat cycle. You're going to be an instrument for a repeat cycle. You're going to treat your kids like your parents treated you. And incidentally, your parents are treating you like their parents treated them. And you're going to pass it down to your kids, and your kids are going to pass it down to their kids. And we just have a, 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 a dysfunctional generation, family, just generation after generation after generation. The Bible called it curses. And what happens is if, you don't, if, the, if you're not doing right and you're not seeking the Lord and you're not walking with the Lord, these curses are passed down to the third and fourth generation. But I love God. He says when you decide that the book stops here and you're going to do what's right and you're going to work and walk according to the will of God, he says I'm going to bless you and he's going to help you and he's going to keep you and that's going to go all the way down through a thousand generations. Oh, a thousand. Oh, oh my God. A thousand generations. So even after I get of age to where I'm challenged and I might not be able to cross every T and dot every I and come before you and have the strength to stand or whatever, I'm still going to be talking about family. Yes, I am. So you have to have vision. Vision is what keeps you together. Over in Proverbs 29, 18, this is just a New Living Translation because I like the way it said it. It breaks it right down. Proverbs 29, 18. The first thing God gave me uh, after he told me the ministry and the name and all that kind of thing, he gave us, you know, all, all churches and, and you have denominations and so on and so forth, uh, religious groups, they, they have a mission statement. They have a vision. We have a mission statement. We have all of that. We have, uh, we have articles of, of uh, declaration. We have scriptures that we go by. We have what we believe. We have all that stuff. So when you, when you become members of Family Life Bible Fellowship Church and any church, they have all these things that they let you know what we believe and, 
and so on forth and forth. Scriptures, we have vision and mission. But we, we made sure that we stuck with the vision because the vision is what is, is, was, our, was our motor. It was our director. It was our protection in so many things. People don't understand how important visions are. And so as we look in the Bible, the Bible says where there is no understanding of the word of the Lord, the people do whatever they want. <laughs> Let me say that again. Where there is no vision, we've heard it. We know it over in the King James Version and other versions. Where there is no vision, the people perish. This version says where there is no understanding of the word of the Lord, what direction God wants us to go, what he wants us to do, what it is that we're supposed to be doing in the kingdom. The people do whatever they want to. But happy is he who keeps the law. See, you just can't, you just, see, what we cannot be is just like the church down the street or the church across the road, across town. The, the question is this, and, th and this, and I need you to listen to me very carefully. In the body of Christ, there are many members, and every member has its function. But we have, as, 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 as people of misunderstanding and, and, and ignorance, darkness we think that the whole body of Christ is going to be a hand well what if your natural body was a hand you can't have no eyes on your fingers man you can't walk on them not for long no ears on your fingers on your hand they want the whole body, so they say, we're here to serve, Lord. We're here to minister and outreach and, 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 and tell the world about the great commission of Jesus Christ and save his soul. Yeah, I understand that, but that's general. What are you in existence for? What are you in existence to do? What is your vision? What's your specialty in the body of Christ? What have you been called to do as an organism? Not an organization, but an organism. You are attached to the kingdom. You are attached to the body. What is your job? Our job is to make sure that we minister to families. We talk about relationships. Family, family, family. Yes, we talk about being saved. We talk about baptism. We talk about living whole. We talk about righteousness. We talk about spirit, soul, and body. We talk about getting your mind renewed. We talk about casting off the things of the flesh. We talk about walking in the spirit and walking in love. And we talk about transformation. And we talk about getting your mind renewed. And we talk about the gifts of the spirit, or the holy gifts of the spirit, or the fruit of the spirit, living on this. We talk about all of those things because you cannot have a healthy, sound family with Without all of those things being taught in place, that's why we say through the word of God. Amen. Amen. But our reason for being in existence is to minister to the family. I'm not going to have time, but next week we're going to talk about the fact that if you stay in the vision, if you stay within the guidelines of the vision, there is so much. There's protection. There's wisdom. There's resource. Everything is in the vision. And that's why a lot of people who left here and supposed to be here, they don't have the resources and their life is in a circle because you're supposed to, you're supposed to still be here. Will, will we still be in existence and still prosper with you gone? You better believe it because God can do anything he wants to and he can do it all by himself. Yes, he can. Taught me that early. We was over. We we were, we were over at we was at Goodwin Hall, and God just wanted. He just wanted to pump my faith. So let me know. Look, this is something that you don't just talk about. It happens for real. And so an individual came and she said, "Look, <laughs> here's a thousand dollars for the ministry. I ain't never in my life, before then or after then." Received a thousand dollars from one individual. Tell me, this is for the ministry. God told me to give this to you, for the ministry. Notice it was for me. It was for the ministry, so I ain't take it. <laughs> it went to the church. We didn't have a building at the time. We were still at AUM, and God said, "This is what I'm trying to show you, that I can touch the heart of anybody." 
So while you're thinking, you got to do it this way. While you're thinking, you need that. And while you're thinking that, that the only way it's going to work, that you got to have this resource and that resource, and you got to know this person and that person, and you got to be so smart, and you have to have so many abilities, and you ain't got to do none of that. All you need to know is Jesus. And I want to help somebody right now. Stop trying to fix everything. Let God fix it. You're going to mess it up. I don't care. You, I, I know you think you know a lot of things. I know you think you've had all these experiences. You know what to say and what to do. And you're feeling a certain thing. And you're feeling, you feeling like you're led to do this and led to say that. Why don't you just chill and let God do what God can only do? Because while we always want to go straight through the front door, God has a trail going around the house. He's going to go through the backyard, and eventually he's coming through the back door. But he did all of that because when God does what he does, it's thorough, it's sound, it's permanent. He know how to finish what he started. He who has begun a good work is able. Oh, yes, he is. And so when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. As we get ready for communion, remember that the vision is here. Where there is no understanding of the word of God, the people do whatever they want to do. And people do not accept divine God as they run wild, but whosoever obey the law is joyful. And so we have to understand that church family vision, personal family vision, we have to understand those things. Just like we have a vision for this church, you must have a vision for your personal family life. Must. You must. I need you to understand as we get ready for communion that don't you know Jesus died on the cross for families, man? Amen. Do you not understand that one of the greatest things and the most challenging things in life is to have a godly functional family. If you were to look at most of the challenges that you're having in your life, if you were to look at your life and the challenges that you're having in your life, It's all connected most of the time to family. Think about if you didn't have to have to deal with that particular issue, that particular person, the problems that they're having, the way that they're acting, the things that they're saying. If you did not have to deal with that, think about how peaceful your life would be. And so I want to get back to the statement that I made. Sometimes you have to be selfish and you just have to make up in your mind that you're going to take care of yourself. At the end of the day, you're going to have a sound mind. At the end of the day, you're not going to let all of this stuff worry you. Because if you die tonight, it's going to still be here. You have to make up in your mind. You're not going to let people worry you. You're not going to let issues worry you. You're going not, to not, like let, you're not going to let or allow what you don't have, what you're supposed to have, what you thought you might get, none of that. Because when you're laying up in the hospital and you're waiting on God to deliver you and heal your body and perform a miracle, all of these things that you're concerned and worried about is not on your mind anyway. 
you're worried about one thing, concerned about one thing, and that's to get to be made whole so you can get back to your normal life. We've got to learn how to have peace in the midst of storms. We've got to learn how to say it is well with my soul. Whatever my lot, whatever life presents me, wherever I find myself, I heard one writer say, in all things, give thanks. But this is the will of the Lord in Christ Jesus. This is the will of the Lord concerning you. Just, 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 just thank him. We must, as you stand to your feet, we must be appreciative of where we are. Always tell yourself, if somebody asks you how you're doing, you tell them you're doing better than good, better than most. Amen. You might even want to go on to say, I'm doing better than I deserve. But in my life, all things are possible because I believe. Amen. Jesus went to the cross. He died an awful, painful death. The body was bruised and beaten and whipped and broken and flesh ripped out his back not for a show but because he loved us Jesus said take this bread and eat it because it represents my body being broken they didn't stop right there from beating him they pierced him in his side he shed it blood so that you and I might live and have a right to the tree of life. He said, this juice represents the New Testament in my blood. Take and drink all of it. Our job is to make sure, listen to me carefully, hear me clearly. Our job is to make sure that we are not sidetracked as we get ready for our announcements, our job is to make sure that we're not, we, don't, we're not, we don't get sidetracked and that we're doing everything that we believe God called us to do while we're here. Find a way. As you go to your seats, find a way to walk in the will of God. Find a way to love God. Find a way to be, to be obedient. And above all, find a way to serve as God has called you. We love you. Praise God for you. We'll be back after the announcements for anyone who is in need of prayer. God bless you. Sister D, come at this time. <laughs>